Welcome back to another episode on Connie Celica, our 1977 Toyota Celica. We are cleaning out the interior from some last bits of wiring so we can get to work on finally mounting up a seat so I can drive this thing. Let's do it. This stuff is all going in the garbage. I guess we'll keep it for the connectors, but yeah, you don't want to throw it out just yet. I don't think we're going to use any of it because we're putting all new wiring in this thing to go with the smart wire from Race Pack. But just in case, we'll hold on to it. And Pete found this, this old beauty in the trunk. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is either. It says... It was kind of tucked up under the rear parcel shelf, so I'm thinking maybe okay audio. monitor. Now, here's my everything's okay alarm. <laughs> this will sound every three seconds. Unless something isn't okay. Yeah, it might be almost a driver like a, for the speakers or, or something. Amplifier, yeah. Amplifier, yeah. Anyway, if you're uh, an old school Toyota guy, maybe you know what that is. And if you want it, you can have it. Just send me an oh, email. No. I will ship this around the world if you want it. <laughs> At your expense, not mine. <laughs> All right, so interior is pretty much cleared out. What we didn't show you when Moose and I originally test fit those Corbo seats in here with the seat rails that they provided, which bolted in perfectly, by the way. What we didn't show you is, well, we showed you that it was a struggle in terms of headroom. So we went ahead and cut out one of the floor mounts in here to try to get the seat lower to do some experimenting on our own. We kind of ran out of steam on that. Pete's here. We're in the new shop. We got fabrication stuff. So we're going to try to sort this out on our own before kind of putting it on, say, Enviato's plate and saying, please help us with fabrication skills. Yeah. If you've been following this series for a while, you'll recognize these seats. It's a GTS 2s from Corbo that Moose and I test fitted. We'll put a link to that video in here somewhere. I really like the seat. It's got like a kind of a vintage look to it, don't you think? It's kind of like an it 80s does, look yeah. to it, even yeah, though this that's is what I love about them. car, but they're super comfortable. I really, they're, they're surprisingly lightweight. I like everything about it. I just don't know if it's going to fit. So we're going to try our best to make it fit. It's a little on the tall side. I might have to go to like a vintage racing bucket that's smaller. But let's make these things fit if we can, PT. So we've got that, uh, that one big bulky mount, factory mount, cut out. And you can see it gets the back of the seat nice and low. But the front of the seat sits quite high because of this, uh, this can frame. Can the seat go back further? It could maybe go back behind like if we just Exactly, if you just moved it past the... And I am on the Corvo seat rail right now, which we can take off. I think what we need to do is take that seat rail off and then kind of like look at the position where the seat would be good. Our plan of attack here is to take these tabs, as you can see, they kind of face the opposite way to bolt on the other side here. And, and the face of this side of the metal is the opposite. So if you look at it, it's very opposing. So we're gonna try to bend the tabs like I did on this side here. More of a flat shape so it fits quite nicely as you can see this is pretty thick steel and in order to bend this you probably want to put some heat into it so I was gonna use the old propane torch but I have a new product that I've been dying to test out and I'm not gonna say this is its intended use it's called the bolt buster and it is a heat induction tool so it essentially heats these two coils up to a very hot temperature and it localizes the hot spot versus using a propane torch where you would kind of like, you know, heat it up and you're heating the whole area up. And if there's grease like there is in this slider and I'm using the torch this way, then the flame's gonna get into here and may burn that off and wreck stuff. Pretty much works like magic. You're not gonna see anything happen other than a bunch of smoke because this thing's wrinkle coated and uh, it's gonna smell once it starts burning it off. Obviously, it's designed to get bolts out that are yes, seized and rusted exactly. and that kind of thing. This but. is a rusty bolt removal tool, which we will showcase when we actually have rusty bolts. But this is the first time I'm able to use it. Oh, you can see it's starting to smoke already. Yeah. So if I leave this on long enough, it may actually turn this piece of metal red. Wow. I don't really want to do that. No, you can, you can smell see it. it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a, yeah, 
a safety because it's <laughs> look at it's it's like boiling or it's wow. a melting that's incredibly effective the uh shush, the, the wrinkle the, coat yeah the wrinkle coat off read that in pt no it's okay we're like vaping at speed academy oh. today so here's yeah. what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna put this hot piece of metal Ooh. in the vise and Start my bending procedure. Oh, it's a good thing we don't have a smell on the internet yet because that is a nasty smell. Oh yeah. See? Yeah, it's bending well. Oh man. Dang, that is good. There you go, DP. Looking pretty it's good. Close. Yeah. That is close. Out. So let's go have a look here. Woo wee! Looking better? Looking. Really good. Well, we've been doing a little thinking about how to mount this up and we made a quick trip over to Metal Supermarket, picked up some flat bar that we've obviously drilled a couple holes in to line up with the holes in the Corbo seat rails. So this is going to get tacked onto that front cross member in the, the floor area. Just dialing in the diversion 180 here, eh, buddy? Yeah. All Miller dust out. off the old uh, welding gloves. Show us what you got. Yeah, man, I've, we've got everything, Miller, you know, and... Uh, no, no, I mean your that. skills. I mean your skills. Oh, well. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to say I'm proud of my skills, because they're definitely not great. I haven't welded in a while, but... Uh, this is how you get better, by yeah, doing exactly, stuff. exactly, but by practicing on your car with something that really isn't that safety-oriented no, at all, No, exactly. Right? This Just is a, a minor detail. bolts holding a seat in. Yeah, yeah. No big deal. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I got the table set up. I forgot how great these are with the, the X is cut into them. Mm -hmm. So this is their, I think, arc station uh, welding table model. And I've got the clamps on here. As you can see, we've got my plate and my nut. We decided we found some nuts in the back, so they were way easier than cutting up those old yeah, pieces, right? Yeah, so, for sure. Um, yeah, I should be ready to go. So uh, we'll see in a second what this looks like. All right. Or will you show your work, PT? You guys can rate me on the internet. Am I hot or not? It's actually pretty damn good. For yeah, a, I think it turned out all. Doesn't do it's all the equipment, well, man. Yeah, it's, it's just the equipment. It just certainly helps. But uh, I'll do the other one, and then we can try to figure out how to. Fit it on we're the gonna car. have to cut some holes. In yeah, the, we're gonna drill some holes. All right, we've got two holes cut. Now the moment of truth is. Whether everything lines up. Oh man, look at that. It fits DP and... Oh, the level. Are we, are, are we level? Yeah, I was making sure that... Uh, but does our level make the noise? Make the noise! No, it doesn't, but it's pretty damn spot on there. <laughs> Gotta prep it for some weld action, you know? Get it nice and clean. Gotta get it clean around this area. <laughs> I've never really welded car sheet metal to a thick metal plate like this before, so bear with me here. But I do know that a thick piece of metal like this usually requires a bit of heat so that it'll be easier to work with so you don't burn through the thin sheet metal. And uh, once again, I've got the bowl buster out. I'm not using the, the propane torch anymore. I'm just gonna use this, heat this up, and then we'll try to weld to it. We'll see how that goes. Here goes nothing. Well, I've got a little bit of the bar in place, somewhat tacked up on this side. I'm not that confident with the welds. As you can see, they're not turning out too great. So thinking this may be a uh, better job for the MIG welder. I just don't know. I think I'm gonna leave this to NV Auto just because this is a safety thing and the last thing I would ever want to happen is for this to break off. I'm confident it wouldn't if I welded it up, but again, I just, <laughs> I don't wanna take the chance. It's not my car. I would feel horrible if anything happened to Dave. So we're gonna leave this. I'm just gonna tack up the other side so we can have it in place here as a mock setup and then we can move on to the back. Now here is about as sketchy a setup as you can get with our bandsaw, but I 
have no choice right now because we are waiting for this amazing piece of machinery to get set up where I can make all the cuts I want. Unfortunately, it is three phase. So Moose hasn't come in to wire this thing up yet, but when we will have this going, sketchy things like this will not be happening anymore. Both of our mounting tubes are cut. As you can see, I've got the square one in there and it looks to be sitting pretty damn well. I actually think it's a good angle. The uh, rectangular one will be a little bit lower, but that's gonna come down to Dave. So we are now waiting for him to get back and you can try this out. And if he likes it, well, I'm just gonna cut a couple of holes here and weld in some nuts and we should have this done. All right, TP, what do you think there? So How's the fitment? It's pretty good, man. I've got a, uh, I mean, I don't know how well you can see up here, but oh, yeah, we, we with the sunroof well. out, like with this junk gone, I'm gonna have a couple of inches of headroom, which yeah. in a car with such a low roof line isn't bad. It kind of reminds me of my old 99 Honda Prelude, Prelude, however you say that. The, the internet's gonna light me up about pronouncing cars again. I, I hope not. <laughs> It kind of has that feel, like it's a low roofline car. Your S14 is kind of like that yeah, too, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. Not a lot of headroom in that car. My helmet hits the uh, sunroof as well. Does it? Yeah. Yep. But I think with this head, with the sunroof gone, we're pretty good. Like I can, I can get in and out of here without smashing my head, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the overall seating position. It's that's good. And that like is using the rectangle uh, tube as a mock setup right now. So the square one, we're not even gonna test. We're not even gonna bother with, yeah. No. So when I said I was gonna leave the welding to NV Auto, I actually consulted Vin and he told me I was doing it wrong by using the TIG. And uh, a MIG welder was better suited for this job. And thankfully, I've got a Millermatic 140, which is ideal. So I'm going to weld this plate in place now that Dave sat in here, we know we're good and um, it's going really good so far. Like I can rip con real good here. Yeah. You know what? You've got good leg room. I think this thing can. That's a, that's about as far as it goes. I feel like the, the steering wheel position is great too. Yeah, it does look good. I think it's a. Uh, it's a win-win. I do feel like there? a seven-foot giant in this <laughs> car. <laughs> like Shaquille O'Neal in there. But uh, yeah, man, I think we're good. So why don't we bolt in the other seat and compare it? Yeah. Because I really hope we don't have to do this again. I know, This has man. been a uh, days of work mm -hmm. for us. No kidding. For you, too anyway. Too much. Too much. So this side went way better. We were actually able to use the factory mounting points. And yep. as you can see, the seat fits really well. I mean, it is a little bit higher, right, DP? But uh, Definitely a few inches higher, but for a passenger, it'll be fine for a passenger. I yeah, think, so. I think so. I'm just going to... Uh, Jumping here on the, uh, the low, low side, and we should mention, by the way, that these Corbo GTS2 seats are easily modified. In fact, you can order them with a shaved base, which I did order, but um, Nate from Corbo USA tells me I can still shave another quarter inch or half an inch out of the base before the side bolsters start to get floppy and stuff. So if I want to make another half inch of headroom over here, which I may well do, I'll shave the base of this seat at least. Probably shave this one too, just to give the passenger a bit more headroom. Factory rails should, I think the factory set up with the Corbo rail, I should say the Corbo rail and seat, I think it's gonna be fine for a passenger. Yeah, I, don't I think so. I totally to have think any so. like NBA players in here. So yeah. I think we're gonna be good. I'm really happy with them. I, I mean, I know they're not a 70s vintage racing bucket, which is kind of like the cool thing to do, but for a practical street car that I'm gonna drive around and have fun in, I think these are really a great choice. They're cheap too. These things are 300 bucks a pop. Yeah, I know. That's insane. That's crazy. For a, for a seat that really does feel like it's a quality piece of equipment. So, uh, yeah, I'm really pleased, Pete. Thanks for all the hard work over here. No problem. I think we just got to uh, do a little tuning of the uh, 
steering column and There's the still a little position. bit of tuning to do yeah There's but i think that's for another episode that is for another episode so let's wrap this one up right here thanks for watching we really do appreciate all the help you guys have really been uh, pitching in on patreon lately we appreciate that tremendously it helps us keep this beautiful new place going next episode i think we're probably going to attack i don't even know pete there's so much to do. I'm overwhelmed right We're now. We're going to make a list next episode. Let's make a list. That's a, that's a good choice. <laughs> Absolutely loving all the tools here. It is phenomenal to be able to cut stuff and weld and do all that. So the new shop, thumbs up to you. Because I love you so much. <laughs>